Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today we are installing some TimberTech Classic Composite Rail Kits. And I thought it might be cool to show you the entire process and how we do it. So if you do like this video, so if you like this video, click the subscribe button. What we have here is a couple different lengths. We have an eight foot and a six foot composite series kit. Depending on the length of the rail sections you have, that you might need a six foot and eight foot. They do make a 10 foot kit, but be warned, if you're gonna use 10 foot rail kits, they come with an aluminum insert, which becomes a little bit more of a challenge to work with. So just remember that if you're gonna to go to a 10 foot kit. All right, so what's inside of this is a top and a, a bottom rail and a top rail insert and a bottom rail uh, cover. And then your top caps are sold separately, so you can choose different types. They have different styles of top caps. Uh, for this particular project, we use an AZEC top cap. Uh, I forget what it's called. We'll get into that later when we get to cut it. For now, we're just gonna put together an eight foot kit, and we're gonna start by cutting some rails down. I already got the measurements. And then we're gonna assemble the balusters over uh, on a table and just kinda and show you the layout and everything that has to do with building this rail system. The post sleeves are already installed and we're gonna be butting into the house in some sections and into some wrapped posts that we have already done. So let's get going. We're gonna get this uh, eight foot rail kit going and we'll get over the chop saw and start cutting it. All right, so the first thing we have to do is cut the bottom support rail to length, which is right here. And then we have to install a couple of crush blocks on it and a couple of hardware components. And then we'll go upstairs. We can get that installed and then we can get to the next step. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this to length, take it over the chop saw and go from there. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we have to install a couple crush blocks and a couple of mounting brackets to the rail. So TimberTech recommends you use a 764 pre-drill bit, but I have these smart bits that are very close to that in size. So it all the hardware comes in a hardware kit with each rail kit. So you, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these uh, rail mounts and I usually keep mine about a 16th to an eighth inch away from the end. That way it really sucks it tight. And I'll pre-drill one hole first. And I'll go ahead and take one screw and get it installed. And I don't go crazy, crazy hard because you can strip it out. Then I go ahead and drill the other three holes. And these are a universal bracket, so they, they work on angles. Now this particular rail is a support rail, so it gets covered by another rail section. It's not gonna be seen. I'm gonna flip this around and get the other one on. So there's four screws per mounting bracket. So our mounting brackets are mounted to our support rail. Now we gotta divide this into thirds because we have to put on an eight foot section of rail, we have to put two crush blocks. So this is a little over six feet. So at six feet, we could use one crush block, but because it's over six feet, we have to use two. So we gotta take this measurement and divide it by three, put it into thirds. So 87 divided by three, 29 inches. Okay, so every 29 inches, we're gonna put a crush block. So I have my two 29 inch marks. I'm gonna just go ahead and check this for giggles. Boom, all right, so Quick tip, when you're working with darker color materials, sometimes graphite's hard to see. So I use a white lead infill on a Pika marker and I can see that very good. And it also erases really easy too. So just so you know. So I'm gonna pre-drill that hole. And then just to make it a little bit easier for the screws, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill the center of this picket. These come, with the kit, so they're pre-cut. That just makes it a little bit easier for the screws to find the holes. And then I'm gonna use these three inch screws come with the kit so we can get these started. You wanna make sure that you put the crush blocks on the proper side of the bottom rail, the bottom support rail. Obviously, if I put them on the same side as our support bracket, that's not gonna work. 
So now that I have this hole drilled, they go right in. You can actually thread this through. All right, crush blocks are installed. So now this bottom support rail can go upstairs and be installed on the house and on the post. We already have a bottom bracket installed onto the post and on the house. So this bottom support rail is gonna sit on those bottom brackets. Then we can pre-drill and screw in these four screws and get this thing mounted. So let's go do that. All right, so here's our bottom rail and we have these brackets that we've attached, we've pre-attached to the post. There's a template that you can use that TimberTech provides you with, uh, but we couldn't use that really for these. We had to just take some measurements. So now that that's done, we take our bottom rail, our bottom support rail, and we make sure it fits fairly snug. Now we're gonna pre-drill through these two holes and add two three inch screws to each side. Again, you don't have to make these super tight. I guess what I'm saying is you don't wanna overdrive the screws. You want them snug, but you don't wanna drive them so much that it, it crushes this bracket into oblivion, okay? So I got two more screws I gotta drop in over here. Sometimes I'll wait to cinch the last, or the, ins the first one until I get the second one installed. I'll kind of trade back and forth. There we go. Okay, so that's installed. So now that that's in, we can go back downstairs and we will assemble the bottom rail that goes, it slides right over the top of this and the top support rail, and we'll assemble all the balusters together with those two parts. Because we're using a metal aluminum, we have to pre-drill, mark out and pre-drill all our own holes. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the top and bottom rail, pre-drill them all, and then we will install the balusters. And then once that's done, uh, we'll assemble it all together and then bring it up here and slide it in place and then lock the top support rail down and then we can cut the top cap. All right, so my top and bottom rail are cut out to length. Now I have to lay out where all the balusters are gonna go. So I've chosen to lay them out at four and a half inches on center. That gives me a little bit less than a four inch gap in between each picket, which will pass any local building code, okay? So I've already done a layout on a stick that's gonna help me figure out what my gaps need to be on each side. So basically for these sections, we're gonna have equal gaps of pickets all the way through, except my ends will be a different measurement, but they're gonna be equal. I want the same distance on this end as I do on that end. So for example, this rail section right here is very similar to the one we're building right now. These all have a little under four inch gap, but then this gap right here and this gap down here have a different measurement than the rest of these. It's the only way to make it look symmetrical, okay? So that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna figure out what these two gaps are gonna be. Then we can do our layout and pre-drill all of our holes. I'll show you that next. So let's get back to our table and we'll do that. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take my layout stick and I'm just gonna stick it in, in this bottom rail. I'm gonna flush it out to this edge. And then I'm gonna come down here and I know that this ends on a picket. So I'm just gonna make a quick mark here. So there's the layout. So my last picket ends right here. So that leaves me residual of an inch and a half. So I have an inch and a half on this end and this end I have four and a half. So if I take four and a half and add an inch and a half to it, that gives me six inches. That's for both sides. So I divide six and a half and I start my layout at three inches away from the end of this side of the bottom rail. And then that will give me a three inch gap on the other side as well. Now all I gotta do is go through and mark each place where I have a line and that's where I need to drill a hole. And in the middle of this rail, there's a, a center indicator, which makes it really easy for me to figure out where to put my drill. Once I have this mark, I ha basically have a crosshair and it's gonna be perfectly centered. Okay. 
So I'm just gonna go through and mark all these out. Layout stick can save you a lot of time, especially when you have 100 feet of railing to do. Once you kind of get in a rhythm, it makes things go pretty quick. And now all I have to do is lay this out to my finish. There, there, and there. Now I should have somewhere in a three inch measurement for this other end. Three and a 16th. So I'm a 16th off this side from that side, but nobody's gonna know that, okay? All right, so now that my layout's done, I can go ahead and drill all these holes and I need to use a special size bit for that. So I need to go grab a 964 drill bit really quick and then we'll drill all these holes. All right, now that we have our bottom rail drilled, now we have to identify where those same holes need to go in our top rail as well. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put the top rail on the inside of the bottom rail because if we mark this hole and we drill all the holes again, we can identify where the holes need to go in our top rail. So these are flush. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill the first hole. Now I'm gonna drill through this. Okay, there's our first hole. Now to keep these from moving around, I'm just gonna take a, a simple screw doesn't really matter what kind it is. And I'm gonna run this screw into both the top and bottom rail. There. Okay, now these rails cannot move, okay? Now that these rails are stuck together, I'm gonna drill each hole for the, the bottom piece, which is actually your top rail. So here we go. All right. Now that we have our top and bottom rail drilled out, now it's time to install the balusters. What we're gonna do, that's your bottom rail. Here's your top infill for your top rail. We're going to install the pickets on this piece first. Okay, so these metal balusters come in a pack. There's 20 in a pack. You'll see in the center, there's a race. That's where the screw attaches to the baluster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-thread. I always start with the support rail first. They take a three inch screw and then the bottom rail takes a two inch screw. They're all included in one bag and you need to separate the lengths. Once you do that, then you can kind of pre-install. These are a square drive screw. You can start, I, I usually pre-install all my screws into the rail just so I don't have to do it looking sideways. And I've found it to be easier to actually install the pickets on this side first. And then it makes it a little easier to install the bottom rail. It's a thinner profile. It makes it easier to install those. So I have all my screws pre-installed. Now I'm just gonna grab a picket. I'm gonna go ahead and run the screw through it. I'm gonna hook it, the screw into the race of the picket. and go ahead and tighten it up. So now I have all my pickets attached to the top rail. Now I got to attach them to the bottom rail. We're gonna use a two inch stainless steel screw. Now this time we do this, each screw has to be set in place. You got to find the race on the inside, but if you tighten it up, it's going to want to su suck the rail to it. And it's going to take a lot of time to, f to get all these together. So my suggestion is you start by threading each screw in a certain depth. And then once you get that one to a certain depth, stop, do the next one until you have all of the screws started and then tighten them up. It's faster if you, you wait to do this as your second step and attach that side first, your top rail first. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab my drill, grab a screw, get my first one going. I could pre, I could pre-tap these too if I want, but I'm only gonna take this in to right there. So I still have a lot of room to move, but that's gonna let me get the next piece started where I'm not trying to make a perfect fit. If, if you try to make it too tight too quick, you're gonna have a problem trying to get the next one to fit in. So now I can find it, thread it in, only take it in so far, go to the next one until you get all these threaded and you just keep doing that. All right, so now that everything is locked in, I can go ahead and tighten this up, 
and then we're ready to take this upstairs and start installing it. Okay, so we have our rail assembly put together. Uh, the last thing we have to do is add a couple mounting pieces to the top of the top support rail. So I'm gonna do that. It's exactly the same as the bottom support rail that we did earlier. And then once we do that, we can take this upstairs and install it on the bottom rail. All right, so we have a rail section up here. It's ready to go. We're gonna go slide it into place and then we're gonna lock it to the house and we're gonna lock it to this post. And then we're gonna double check the measurement of our top cap and then we'll cut our top cap and install it and we'll be done. So uh, let's get this over here and I'll show you how quick and easy it is to drop this in. Okay, now that that's in, we just wanna make sure that we're plumb, fairly level, and then we can pre-drill and install this top rail with the brackets we installed on top of the support rail. Then we can double check our length and get our top rail cut and installed. So sometimes I'll take a scrap piece of the top cap, and this is the top cap profile we're using for this particular build. And I'll make sure that when I put it on here, that I have a nice fit, that it's gonna look good, so on and so forth. And then I may grab a torpedo level and just double check and make sure I'm plumb, or that at least I have the proper level direction I wanna go. So I'm a little out of level here. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock this rail this way a little bit into level. But I also wanna make sure that my top cap's not hanging out the back side of the post. And I still got a little bit of room to play. So if I need to move it, it's pretty close. I could knock it over just a little bit more. That's money right there. So I like that. That's where I'm gonna install it. I'm gonna grab my pre-drill, tapered pre-drill bit. Okay, so now our bottom rail's installed. Our bottom support rail, our bottom rail, and our top support rail are all installed. All the pickets are installed. Now all we have to do to finish this is install our top cap. So I'm gonna double check my measurement really quick, make sure it's exactly the way I want it. We'll go down and cut that, bring it back up, and then I'll show you how we install that. I have my top rail cut, but before I install it, TimberTech sends out two different types of screws. They have a straight rail and a stair rail set of screws for the top cap. Make sure you use the straight rail when you're using regular deck railing screws, or else I've actually had somebody do this once. They used the wrong screw, and when they brought it through, they pushed it right through the top cap. You don't wanna do that. So this, this screw will stop short of the top cap when it's screwed through the top support rail. You gotta pre-drill those holes before you put this in. So we're gonna do a quick layout and use a 3 16 bit and drill. I usually go right through the middle of where the pickets are. There's one. And on an eight foot section of rail, you wanna use at least four screws to, to screw it down. Since it's over two foot, if we only use two we're going to use three in the middle of the run which gives us four gaps about every 19 inches now that those holes are drilled we can go ahead and get our top rail installed and then we can screw it together and we'll be done all right that's nice and tight sometimes when i'm running the screws from the underside of the support top support rail into the top cap I like to use a clamp with some protection, like these rubber surfaces are nice, and I'll just put it like right here. That way the screw doesn't push up on the rail when I'm installing it. All right, guys, there you go. Uh, that's one section, an eight foot section of TimberTech Radiance rail installed with a Premier top cap. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please don't forget to click that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Don't forget to like this video. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you think about this rail system. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.